Good day, folks. Again, it's a, it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you from God's Word. Spring is in the air. And as I came to the studio this afternoon, I was just thanking God because the warmth of the sun and the melting of the snow is another reminder that life goes on and that God is always in control. I want to share with you today a message from my heart that I hope will be a message that you will receive and that God will bless you through the Word. I want to read to you from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, and just a couple of verses. Now the tax collectors and the sinners were all gathered to hear Jesus speak. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and he eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety and nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and he goes home. Then he calls his friends, calls his neighbors together, and he says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent." Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's a powerful portion of Scripture. Uh, some have said that the 15th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel is called a gospel within a gospel. The 15th chapter contains three parables of things or stuff that were lost. There was the lost sheep, there was the lost coin, and there was the lost son. You and I understand, because we've gone through it, I'm sure, that the loss of something, something that we love, causes deep sorrow. But when we find that which we have lost, there is joy, there is rejoicing, and we want to share the news with other people that the lost is found. And, and the story of the lost sheep that was found by the shepherd is a symbol of great rejoicing when lost sinners return to their heavenly Father. And Jesus carefully told the parable so that it would impact those who would be listening to his precious words. In fact, Jesus is finding himself between a rock and a hard place. You see, he came to present himself to the whole world as the Savior of humankind. And, and on this particular occasion, you'll note that Luke says he was surrounded with collectors, tax collectors, and sinners. Whoop de doo! That's why he came. And it was an offense to the scribes and the Pharisees that Jesus accompanied and associated with men and women who by the Orthodox they were labored as sinners. Now, just follow with me for a moment here. History will remind us that Pharisees gave to the people who do not keep the law a general or classification. And sometimes they called these sinners the people of the land. And it was spoken in a derogatory sense. And because they were the people of the land, they would have no association with the people of the law, with the good people, 
the people of God. So if you were a sinner of any kind in the eyes of the Jew or many of them, you were ostracized and you did not have fellowship with them. And so Luke 5, the Pharisees call Jesus into question. And they had a right to ask the question. The question was this, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? In other words, why do you eat with the people of the land? And Jesus did not hesitate with an answer, and it kind of blows my mind. Jesus said in Luke 30 and 33, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Amen. He said, I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know that they are sinners and they need to repent. Jesus spends his entire life reaching people who are in need, loving people who feel that they are unloved. And so to illustrate the importance of recognizing that even the people of the land uh, are loved by God, he uses the parable of the lost sheep. He, he talks about the sheep that was lost, the seeking and the searching and the finding and the rejoicing that was done by the shepherd. A little bit of background here to get you to see the picture. To the shepherd in Israel, to lose just one sheep would be a devastating loss. Understand that now. Not just an economic loss, but a loss of pride and a sense of caring and the satisfaction of knowing that he did his best but even under the most meticulous circumstances, sometimes a sheep could be lost. His attachment to the flock was so intimate and so personal that losing just one sheep was sometimes like losing a son or a daughter or a parent or a very close friend or friend. And sometimes in that day, a flock of sheep would probably and could easily belong to the village. And because it was a village flock, there would oftentimes be more than just one shepherd looking after or overseeing the sheep. The shepherds, they had each other's back. Their support and their love and their care toward each other, toward each shepherd, would have been reflected in their commitment to making sure that the flock was protected from ravenous animals, that the flocks would be led from green pasture to green pasture to green pasture, that they would be led, led to cool, clear, clean water. And injured sheep would be cared for with the gentleness of a parent caring for a child. Now, in this parable, Jesus uses the number of 100 sheep, and all but one is safe. A lamb had wandered away. Maybe it was hurt, we don't know. Maybe an animal had attacked and killed an injured sheep. But when the truth was known, and when the numbers were counted, and one sheep was missing, the shepherd would leave the 99, or the 199, or the 299, and he would search with the diligence of a gold digger. This is my sheep. This is my lamb. I am responsible, though I still have 99 sheep that are safe and healthy and well, I have lost a sheep and I need to go find it. 
No obstacle was so great, no danger so imminent, no night so black or long that the shepherd would not continue his search in very difficult situations. If the sheep was destroyed by an animal, it was incumbent upon the shepherd to at least produce the fleece of that lamb to show the village or his fellow shepherds how the sheep had perished. The parable is a beautiful story of finding that which was lost. And when he finds the sheep, there is joy uncontrollable. He will place the sheep upon his shoulders. If it's injured or if it was lost, if it's still breathing, he will take that sheep upon his shoulders. He will literally come into the village and he is rejoicing almost uncontrollably. There is a shouting, a triumphant shout. And he says, so all of the villagers could hear him. He says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. And there would be a celebration in the community. There would be a celebration amongst fellow shepherds because the lost had been found. Now you understand the point that Jesus wants to get through to the scribes and to the Pharisees and to the keepers of the law. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. I can see it. I can feel it. I can celebrate with the shepherd. Jesus says, this is awesome. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And when Jesus hung on that cross with his outstretched arms, it was symbolic of the fact that he was reaching around the entire globe and saying to humanity, because you've been lost to sheep, I've died to bring you back into the fold of God. And so he continues, Jesus does in the Word, he continues to explain his credentials and his resume. He says on one occasion, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. And my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. Do you feel today that you're a little lost? Uh, you're, you're a little disturbed. You're not sure where you are. You're not sure the direction you're going in, if you should be going or coming to the right or to the left. I want to introduce you today to Jesus Christ, the great shepherd who laid down his life for you. Receive him today. God bless you. Let me just pray with you. Lord, let the great shepherd today, the Lord Jesus Christ, come into the hearts of men and women, boys and girls, so they would acknowledge that he brings life, he brings truth, because he is truth. Bless us today in the name of Jesus we ask. Amen and amen. God's blessings upon you. Amen. Amen.